tell us how do you feeling about this whole experience so far with Melody Grand Prix? Um, it's pretty crazy. I think online is pretty crazy. Um, there's been a lot of um, pre stuff that we've been doing for MG Pairs. A lot of rehearsals. There's a lot of um, uh, online stuff. I I've, I've had so many people um, messaging and and commenting and and sort of like on Twitter is kind of wild. <laughs> so it's definitely. Um, it's a it's a very like a quick amount of people compared to releasing just a single. Everyone sort of from everywhere comes in and has a say, and so that's kind of cool. Um, so busy. Is it as you expect to be this whole experience, or even better? Ah, ah, uh, almost a little bit better because I think I expected um, you know a sort of attention from the Nordics, but it's really cool that we're getting a lot from everywhere else as well and there's everyone from that just watches Eurovision and then just like stands all the like national finals as well and then they're just like oh we're listening to yours and we're gonna be watching the semi and da 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 so yeah it's crazy I didn't know it was that like um uh, exp uh what's the word that um exposed is that the word yeah like it's it's that that's that big yes. everywhere else in Europe as well it was cool uh, so tell us some things about yourself. Uh, we know that you are from Australia, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, so um, I, yeah, I'm Australian, Norwegian. Um, my dad comes from Oslo, and so growing up, we were sort of going half the time here, half the time there, um, seeing family, and then um, I grew up in Sydney, so it's like already incredibly multicultural. So <laughs> there's this already like when you live in Sydney, you know. I, you just sort of end up with a friend group that's with people from somewhere else, basically. So um, I didn't feel very, like, out of the norm being half Norwegian or, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I grew up there, and now I work and record and sing over here, and, and yeah. Tell us about your song now. Let's talk about the song. What is the meaning behind this song, this entry? Yeah, well, the the song meaning is basically when you you sort of have a crush on someone or you sort of like someone, but they're with someone else, and then you're just kind of like, yeah, but how can I get rid of them so I can be with them? It's it's basically like the most like sadistic, um, if I can't have you, no one else can sort of mentality thing. So the character is crazy and he's just wanting to be with this person and doing whatever it takes to be with them, basically. The song was written specifically for Melody Grand Prix also, or it was written for you as an artist and then you came like, why not put it in the Eurovision bubble? Yeah, well, it was, it was pretty much that. Like, I I wrote it just for the project, which is like the Milo as a, as a character, which is like this character that's very like Yandere, very um, stalkery, like creepy, but like also kind of likable, like kind of like the villain character. But um, I wrote it for that project, and then I was talking to my management, and I was just sort of like, what if we, like, what do you think about us putting it in this show? And, um, and they were sort of like, yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about it. And then we talked about it, and then we sent it, and then they were like, let's talk about it, and then they liked it, and yeah. So it was kind of, it wasn't written for it specifically, so it's it's a little bit almost it does, it stands out as being a bit different to the rest of it, but um, they liked it enough to put it in there, so that's great. So can you tell us uh, a bit about the staging of the song, or is it a secret and you can tell about it? Ooh, I don't know. Is it a secret? What am I allowed to say? Keep half of it, like give us, give us, any, give us a hint. Give us a hint. Um, it's it's very uh. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to think of how I can say stuff without getting like saying too much. The the staging is very crazy. The character is insane, and I think all of the staging and everything around it really shows you that. I would say. So he's a little he's a little loopy, and um, the whole staging and the whole concept reflects all of that. It'll make more sense, but I don't want to say any more because I don't want to get in trouble. We will see the we will see the villain on the stage. Yes, 
Yeah. The villain character. The unhinged guy you're going to see on the show. That is exactly right. You know, there are some people who have compared you to Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, because I got tagged, like, yesterday in... There was, there's, like, a Norwegian, um, like, blog, like, website that, um, just, ha like, a gossip sort of thing. They have miscellaneous, you know, uh, current things that are going on. And then they were like, oh, my gosh, the two, like, actors from um, Harry Potter, the Draco Malfoy and his dad reunited. And then, like, the next two seconds, like, every single tagging was like, oh, Milo, your family's here. Oh, my God, Milo, look, your parents are here. Oh, my God, look, your brother's here. And I was just like, guys, please, no. So I think, um... It seems to be a thing. I think it's because my hair is really blonde and it's like um, the the uniform when I had the presentations, like the, the outfit yeah. I had, like all of it tied in and everyone was just like, yeah, that, that looks like you. Um, it's funny. I, I like that the the followers that I have are, are like, <laughs> they got a good sense of humor. I'm not mad. Uh, have you heard the other contestants from Melody Grand Prix this year? Do you have any favorites? Do you know artists before... The announcements? Um, ooh, I've heard some of them, and I, there's some that I like, and I think that they like slap, but there's, I don't know, um, I didn't know any of them before the show, so I met them all on the presentation day where, where we all went in and, and, um, did the announcement, and some of them are so sweet, and they're such nice people, um, so I, I kind of like them because I just like them as a person. Some of the songs are good as well, um, but yeah, I think they're, I think they're really cute. So, yeah, I don't know. Are you a fan of the Eurovision Song Contest? Have you watched the contest before? Yes, yes, I was like, I was like, it's like every year, and I drag my family to watch it, and I make my friends watch it, and they sometimes are like, I don't really want to watch this, and I'm like, you don't get a choice. We're putting it on, like I. Yeah. You're a real fan. Yeah, I'm like, I didn't ask if you wanted to watch it. We're watching it. Sit down. Um, yeah, I, I watch it all the time. I think every, almost every year. I think I've only missed it one year in the past, like, since I was, like, a teenager. Because it's, it's always interesting. There's always some songs that I'll take from your vision and just be like, that's going on the playlist. Like, it's just, it's a fantastic platform. And um, last year's was actually quite good, too. Um, I think... 2012 was my favorite. If that was Euphoria, like that year, there were so many good songs. Yes. And I was just like, you're coming with me, you're coming with me, you're going to my playlist. Like I took, I took half of the set list on, I swear to God. So Euphoria is your favorite Eurovision entry? <sighs> is that allowed to be? <laughs> Can I say that? I, 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 I like it. I think it was really good. And I think the thing about it as a performance that year um, was just the fact that it was super minimal. If it's not like Alexander Ryback and Fairy Tale, then it would be Euphoria as well, because the 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 way that it stood out so much from everything else that year, and it was so stripped back, and it was just her. That was like, that was really good. That was so different. And if you could choose any Eurovision artist to make a duet with, like on your next project, who would it be? I don't know. Um, you know what I would say, and this is kind of like slightly obscure, but I feel like I would say from Twitter's perspective of who I should work with, and I kind of agree, would be, um, was it Luke Black who was in last year? Or yeah, Jan from, from Poland, Serbia. yeah, who should have won, or like should have got like into Eurovision. I liked... I liked um, Bebe. It's kind of crazy, but I did like Jan as well, and I was kind of like, you... Uh. So, yeah, either Jan or Luke Black, I think, would be really cool as you and I to work with. Nice choices. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, um, will you be able to sing a bit of your song for us? Now? Any, any specific part? <laughs> Whatever you want, whatever part you want. Uh, you're mine, you know, I would never hurt you, baby. Unless you try to leave me, then maybe. And that's okay, too, because you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and before we 
come to an end, a small message to all the Greek fans from Eurovision fan watching you right now. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, stream it. I don't know if you can vote, if you can vote. Um, thank you so much. I really want to go there so badly. Um, that is a conversation for another time. But I love you and thank you so much. We thank you very much and uh, we really, really hope to see you in Malmö. <gasps> thank you so much. So do I. We will say it. We hope we can have this whole conversation again face to face in Malmö, Sweden. <gasps> no, for real. That would be. That's. That's. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank for this. Best. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys.